Hello everybody, are you here? I want to talk about the balance changes. So, um, this is the first time ever that Blizzard does balance changes twice in between expansions. I think that's a good thing because it shows that they really care about the player base experiencing the best game they can and just feeling something uh, refreshing once in a while. Um, let's look at the nerfs. And then I'll like talk a little bit about what I think these changes mean also in the grand scheme of things, with like the rotation coming very soon. So Cobalt is two mana from one. This makes it uh, not playable in Ad Rogue anymore. And I don't know if even Miracle Rogue wants to play it uh, any longer. Like maybe they do, but I don't know if it's gonna be that good. Also, you cannot play it in KLSF Rogue, but KLSF Rogue was already not that amazing. So, that's not a big change. Basically, for now, you cannot play it in Odd Rogue, and in like the foreseeable future, you cannot play it in Miracle... You, you can play it in Miracle Rogue, but... Do you really want to do it? Um, now, Leroy, Shadow Step, Cold Blood still works, and that's 15 damage. But uh, to deal like more damage, you need to like prep the second Cold Blood, or like prep an Eviscerate. And... I think now it's gonna be like weaker than Eviscerate, but still probably playable in Miracle Rogue, just that it's not gonna be amazing. Flametongue Totem at 3 mana is like very big uh, change, mostly because it's not being able to be played in Even Shaman, and Even Shaman is right now the only version of token Agro Shaman, so without Flametongue they're gonna lose a lot of power, and without that deck Flametongue might not see play for like a long time. Is Flametongue still playable? It's as playable as Coldblood is two, at 2 mana, like, maybe, but not for now. Like, maybe in like one year, somebody will like make an Agro Shaman deck that just like wants to play Flametongue after they play 1 drop and 2 drop, I don't know. I still think the card is like, decent, value-wise. Basically, like, if they would print this card today, would I be like, sure, that's a good card, or would I be like, that's garbage. I think both Coldblood and Flametongue would hit the playable sometimes mark, but not uh, insane in like any situation. Equality on 4, on the other hand, this is like probably the harshest nerf. I think they had to make it 4 mana because at 3 mana they would be, it, it would be too powerful still. And it would also be able to be played in uh, Odd Poly, and I think they wanted to really, really avoid that. Um, 4 mana is like super harsh nerf. I think Equality is like very bad now. I think we're gonna play Shrink Ray over playing Equality, at least until Shrink Ray rotates. So like one more year, we're definitely gonna play Shrink Ray over Equality. And maybe after Shrink Ray rotates, people are gonna come back to like trying Equality. It could still see playing like a couple years, but I don't believe Equality to be that amazing. Hunter's Mark also got a very harsh treatment. It used to be 0 mana, now it's just like 2 mana. It's so crazy how good Hunter's Mark was even at 1 mana. Mostly because of Candleshot and Spring Pro. But this kind of cards like Candleshot and Spring Pro is something that they might want to print again in the future. So that's why they probably nerfed Hunter's Mark. Um, actually also, they don't rotate out, so they had to kind of like hit the mark. Otherwise, maybe Hunter would be like way too strong in the future too. At 2 mana, it's very close to Deadly Shot. It's kind of like the Equality versus uh, the Shrink Ray. I might as well just play Deadly Shot if it's like only 1 mana difference. But maybe it's still gonna be like better than Deadly Shot at 2 mana because you have like so many 1 mana activators. You can go like uh, Candle Shot on 1 and then like later on, just Hunter's Mark, try to feed it in the turn and it wouldn't be that bad. But I'm still not sure, I'm still not sold on the Hunter's Mark. And then we have Emerald Spellstone, which is an interesting nerf. I think it's like the least harsh nerf, mostly because it's not a classic card. It's a card that can rotate out and will rotate out very soon, actually. Like, it rotates out in when, when the next expansion comes out, and that's expected to be in like two months. So, this card getting nerfed. I don't think nerfs Hunter in the grand scheme of things, mostly because I already felt. Pure Beast Hunter, no secrets, no spellstone, was like the better Hunter deck. But 
I think overall across all ranks, Secret Hunter was performing a little bit better. So that's why they probably decided to nerf this over nerfing, let's say, Hyena or like Crackling Razor Mouth, which I think are bigger offenders than the Spellstone. Because the Spellstone, it's powerful, but it's also predictable. And like, what's annoying about the Spellstone is that they can Zul'jin and get it back. Without Zul'jin, I don't think Spellstone would have been an issue. And even with Zul'jin, I still think the power level of like Secret Spell Hunter was lower than what Beast Hunter can do. A lot of this just cannot deal with Dire Maul on 1 into Crackling on 2, and then having Scavenging Hyena with Spring Paw at their disposal whenever. So, now people were suggesting that maybe even Hunter is playable because you can play this in even Hunter, but I don't think even Hunter is good, they just like don't have access to like a lot of the ca important cards. Like, you don't get to play any of your important 1-drops and none of the 3-drops. That already in my eyes kills the deck. And then you want to play Secrets, but you cannot play Subject 9, so... Even Hunter is not happening. People are either going to play Spell Hunter and just play the 6 mana Spellstone and uh, deal with it, or they can play Beast Hunter. And I think there's going to be like way more Beast Hunter, but there's still going to be some Spell Secret Hunter here and there. Um, Beast Hunter only loses Hunter's Mark, they might still play it at 2 mana, they might play it like as a 1-off, maybe not 2-off. I still think the deck is going to be like super powerful. So overall, people were complaining about a couple things. First of all, there are too many changes to Basic and Classic. That I can agree with, but if you look at Basic and Classic, the power level of the sets are a bit too high. And I think some soft changes here and there are like good and healthy for the game. At the same time, I kind of agree with what Kibler said and like maybe Harson needs a core set with like changes every single couple, couple years or months to like keep it, things fresh. For example, they could be like, okay, instead of like destroying equality, we just move it out of the core set and maybe we can bring it out in a couple years and people are going to be like, wow, um, we get to enjoy a different game without equality or without Pyromancer, which is also like a very powerful card. Um, and then like in like two years people are just gonna like get the quality back and they'll be like wow I remember the times I used to play quality. I'm looking forward to like try it again so Now the card is just gonna like not see play for a long time And that removes like I don't know the spirit of the card as Ben Brod used to say Which is not a bad thing necessarily It allows new cards to shine more and if that's the purpose, I'm all for it. Um, I don't know, again, I like them making changes. I kind of expected them that uh, some changes might happen, but like I wasn't 100%. Feels good that uh, they really want to like shake things up even though we're so close to a rotation. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I don't know, like, my solution, I discussed it on stream too, would have been making a rotation every single time an expansion releases, and uh, I think that would solve a lot of the issues, but it still would not e solve the issue with, like, classic and uh, basic. And if they want to, like, keep changing classic and basic, there's still things to change. They are still very powerful cards, but at the same time, they are unique cards, like Wild Pyromancer, Doomsayer, Maligos, these kind of cards are like the foundation of Hearthstone. Can you really change everything up? Or can you like keep some cards to like be able to have something if you like don't play the game for a while and come back? There are some cards that like you know are always going to be there. That's like the biggest debate about uh, the nerfs. But at the end of the day, I'm a player. I, do I don't know that much about like game design other than just my in-game experience. And as a player, I can say, I like these changes, and I like change overall. So, yeah, looking forward to the meta game. Um, now to make some small predictions, I'll say... Adrog is not gonna be played on ladder, it will still be played in like tournaments where they want, where you want to make like an anti-aggro lineup. Paladin, mostly OTK Shivara Paladin, that I played a lot last month. I still think it's going to work. I'm gonna try building it first with Shrink Ray and trying to like adjust the build, but I'm pretty sure it's still going to work. 
your worst matchup is probably going to be the hunter, the beast hunter that will try to rush you down. So maybe we play like a more anti-aggro version. Um, I was thinking of even playing Doomsayer to like stop the hunter in his tracks in the early game. And I think that might work out. That's pretty much the only thing we're losing, equality. Like, when we, if we can like go and play Shrink Ray and then play some anti-aggro early game, I think we can still make the deck work. So my main priority as a streamer will be making Shirvala work again without equality. Um, again, Hunter, I expect it to still be really good in the form of Beast Hunter and dominate the game. And then the meta game will probably create around Hunter, Priest and uh, maybe like something like still Shirvala. I don't expect decks like Control Mage to become better, for example, because they just lose to like Hunter and they lose to Priest and they lose to Shivala. So I expect the meta game to be quite similar, just less spell hunters, more beast hunters, and Shivala's looking differently. Priests are still gonna be like pretty good, but I don't think they're gonna be like insane. I still think Beast Hunter is going to keep them in their track. So yeah. Let's see how it uh change how, how things are changing and uh I'll see you on the stream. Thank you very much for watching guys. Have a great one.